my friends, what is going on and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today we're focusing on the topic of gyno. Gynecomastia, man boobs, bitch tits. You might have even been called cone tits. Or maybe that was just me. Yeah, that was pretty harsh guys. Back in the day, 12 years old, being called cone tits and not knowing what the fuck was going on. That's gyno for you. That is gyno coming on through puberty. And uh, look, at the end of the day, I've been through it all. I've been through the, the worst of the worst as far as bullying goes. I've been through the worst of the worst as far as actually finally getting the surgery and recovering. But what I will say and what I'll always say and what I always say to any person that messages me about my recovery and about how I feel today, right here, right now, about all of that shit that's happened in the past, and what I will always say with 110% confidence is that the surgery was worth it, okay? So, just think about that for a second. My recovery would have to be one of the most horrendous recoveries you'll ever see. But it was still worth it. So just remember that. Today I'm here to try something new. I'm here to bring this topic back onto my channel. I receive thousands. I have received thousands. I receive, you know, certainly weekly, if not daily, at least a message or two from, from someone out there uh, who has come across my videos to do with gyno and um, you know has related enough to want to either send thanks or, or possibly ask me a question or you know at the very least just yeah say thank you thank you for for what I've done for for me you know um, putting my experience however shit it may have been on YouTube for the world to see and and to hopefully help someone else and that's exactly what it's done I know this video series has helped out thousands of guys you know, I, I am, I am, I'm aware of that, and, and that makes me proud. But it also makes me feel a, a sense of responsibility to uh, answer questions, to answer the most commonly asked questions that I get from, you know, my, my YouTube viewers and subscribers. So that's what we're here for today. Today is video number one of a whole list. I want to try this out. I want to put this video out as quickly as possible. I want to see what the response is like, and if you guys want to see more, or if you do have any specific questions, hit me down in the comment section below. But without further ado, it's time I run through my top five tips to prepare successfully for a gyno surgery. Prepare successfully for a successful gyno surgery. Five tips. But first, a quick word from our exclusive video sponsor, the Ridge Wallet. What's up guys? First and foremost, thank you for clicking on this video. Secondly, this video is brought to you by none other than the Ridge, makers of the world famous and now YouTube famous, at least on my channel, Ridge Wallet. In less than two seconds, I'm gonna show you exactly what the hype's all about. Next minute. That's what it's all about. This wallet holds just as much as this, yet this one is bulky, ugly, and outdated. Now this one, being that it is a Ridge wallet, holds 12 cards, it's sleek, it's stylish, it holds cash. There's over 30 different styles, including this one, which is matte black, and this one, currently unopened, which is 18 karat gold. Not only does the look and design speak for itself, but the packaging is next level also. And when it comes to giving a gift, when it comes to even gifting yourself, when you deserve it, of course, that's a win. The whole entire wallet is the exact size of a credit card, and the way that you access the cards is to push up from the bottom. Let's be honest, 40,000 five-star reviews, they don't lie. There is a lifetime warranty on each of these wallets. If, for whatever reason, you're not happy, you have a 45 day window to receive a full refund. I've got to be honest, at first I was skeptical. I have seen it advertised on other YouTube channels. YouTube channels I respect, actually, and enjoy watching. So it was only a matter of time until I tried it out for myself. It's not only wallets. The website does have an entire range of products designed to carry less and live more. And that is a quote that I've actually lived by for years. Head over to www.ridge.com slash Jacob. Use code Jacob for 10% off. And I guarantee you, this will be, whether it's in black or 18 karat gold, the last wallet you'll ever use. Guaranteed. Because there's no way in the world I'm going to be carrying something like this around anymore. Cheers, guys. And enjoy the video. Yes, that's right. My videos are sponsored. We're moving up in the world. <laughs> We're moving up. Guys, okay. This is what you're here for. The meat and potatoes of the video. Five tips. It's not going to take long. I'm going to run through each of the five tips briefly and then recap at the end. So tip number one. Tip number one is something you can do yourself. You don't need anyone else's help. This is going to be, this is going to be a, a, a first 
I guess, test. I guess this is the first test that you can give yourself when preparing for the surgery to, to, to test your level of commitment, to test your level of you know, motivation around getting the best result possible, okay? So the first tip is to lose weight. The first tip is to get in shape, okay? It's to get your body fat percentage down a few notches. Now, I'm not gonna say get into bodybuilder type shape. I'm not even gonna say get into single digit body fat percentage because there's a few people out there with certain types of genetics that, you know, unless they starve and starve and starve themselves, put them through, through a whole lot of shit, they will never ever get there. So that's not the goal. The goal is to drop some weight. The goal is to get yourself in the best possible position to go into that surgery and give the surgeon the least amount of possible mistakes that they can make, right? So if we go in there with a nice and lean chest, nicely shaped chest, apart from obviously the gyno that we're gonna get cut out, it's gonna make the incisions easier, it's gonna make you know, the ability for the surgeon to actually get a clean, you know, a, a, a clean cut um, around the you know, mass of uh, breast tissue. It's gonna mean that when they do cut that breast tissue out, there's not gonna be big you know, pockets of fat everywhere that the surgeon may well cut into, which will then, which will then leave you know, a result um, with, with possibly you know, indentations. Because when they do try and cut you know, this mass out, they're gonna be cutting it away from a layer of fat. The smaller that layer of, the thinner that layer of fat is, the less mistakes the surgeon, you know, could possibly make as far as cutting pockets of that fat out as well as the actual mass that you're wanting to get out of there. Does that make sense? The less fat on your body, the less fat around your chest means that what you really want to cut out of there is more obvious and more pronounced. Which means you should, in theory, get a cleaner end result. Now I'm not going to say that's completely essential, but like I said, it's going to give you a more clean result. And not only that, but it's going to give you you know, a, a, better, a better look in the early stages of recovery when you may well be bruised, you may well be swollen. If you've got a whole lot of body fat there as well, it's gonna be extremely hard to actually figure out what on earth is actually going on there as far as the recovery goes. Now, because of the fact that I, I was relatively lean, I could still remain hopeful throughout those times that I had this massive hematoma that looked, you know, hundred times worse than my gyno ever did because I did still have that shape around my chest and, and you know as the hematoma would slowly slowly dissipate I could see the shape slowly but surely you know coming coming in around my chest and that's what gave me hope that's all the hope I had that's all the hope I could hang on to was that you know at the end of the day I would have a nice lean clean result and I guess in the end I got it my second tip to prepare for gyno surgery as effectively as possible would be to pick the right surgeon, okay? And there's one thing that comes to mind when it comes to my surgery, and that is that you get what you pay for. You do get what you pay for. I mean, the average gyno surgery for each side would be, I think, four to five grand for each side. So we're talking, you know, 10 grand total. And if you're not comfortable with spending eight to 10 grand to get the surgery done, then I don't think you should be looking into it. And at the time that I wanted to get it done, I wasn't prepared to spend that much. I don't think I even had that much. So I was looking for the cheaper option and I got the cheaper option. So all I can say for this tip is to, you know, pick your surgeon wisely, take your time and make sure that you can see some before and after pictures. I saw some, I didn't see many, but like I said, I really didn't have a choice at the time because I found a surgeon that could do it, you know, within my budget and I decided to say, you know what, fuck it. Let's go for it. Now, I'm not gonna say I could have prepared for that surgery better, but I certainly could have, you know, taken my post-operation care a little more serious. I, I you know, I, I, I couldn't, I could never have predicted what would, hap what would happen to me, but there are reasons why that happened, such as taking my drains out too early, such as not having someone to help me, you know, after the surgery, uh, because all you wanna do is lay down on your back still, Take your painkillers, get through those first two or three days, let the bleeding subside, take your drains out, put your vest on, and continue, and continue, and continue. Now, I did none of that. I did none of that. I was by myself. So that brings me to my third tip. That's four, that's three. Third tip of the day to prepare yourself for a successful gyno surgery and recovery would be to get someone to help you. Okay, get someone to help you in those at least two or three days post-surgery. 
get someone to drop you off at the hospital, pick you up, take you home. I don't think you're going to want to eat much. Um, you're probably not even going to want to drink much. The, the painkillers that they give you are, you know, strong. Thinking back, they made me feel quite nauseous. So all you're really going to want to move around for in that first couple of days is to literally take your painkillers, get a glass of water and to drain your drains. <laughs> drain your drains. Empty your, your drains if you've got them in. So a big tip, a big, big tip. I'm not going to say it's essential, but it's certainly going to help in the long run. Have someone with you at the very least. You might not need their help in the end, but at least have someone there. So it's a possibility if you do need it. That's tip number three. Tip number four is back with the surgeon again. So not only do you want a surgeon that you, you trust, uh, one that other people trust, one that you've seen you know, evidence of successful surgeries time and time again, but you also want one that you can, you can talk to because at the end of the day, the last thing you want is to have complications and not feel like you're on that, that level, um, that, that you know, personable level with your surgeon so you can ring them up freely, openly, honestly, and, and tell them exactly what you're thinking because that's what I couldn't do. I didn't know my surgeon. So when it came time, you know, a week, two weeks after the surgery and I couldn't go in and see him because he was in, an, in another part of the country, all I had was the mirror. All I had was me. I was looking at myself, I was thinking, what the fuck is going on? I was a little bit ashamed, to be fair. I was feeling a little bit ashamed. I was feeling a little bit sheepish due to the fact that I didn't do my due diligence with the surgeon and, and due to the fact that I was stuck here, you know, suffering through these symptoms and, 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 and feeling honestly unable to ring my surgeon because of embarrassment. It was terrible. So all I can say, all I can hope for is that you, you feel confident in a word talking to your surgeon and you know if things do go awry fingers crossed they don't touch wood but if they do all you want to be able to do is 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 feel confident uh, in your surgeon and in their advice post surgery because i will admit a, a, a big portion of the guys messaging me about this subject on youtube are guys who are in their early days of recovery they don't have the support of their surgeon or they don't feel confident with their surgeon so they t they type on youtube you know horror gyno recovery or gyno recovery advice and they find my videos and they find you know me going through possibly similar uh, symptoms and, and a similar situation that they have and then they relate to it and they ask me the questions and i'm like well you should probably ask your surgeon so this goes back to tip number four develop a relationship with your surgeon one that you're comfortable with and ask questions. The final part of that tip is ask questions. There is no silly question. Seriously guys, ask questions. Write them down before you go in for your first consult. Go to multiple surgeons. Have five different consults. Same questions. Pick the surgeon that you're most confident with. You don't have to pick the first one. You certainly don't. Now, that brings us to tip number five. And this is just a general tip. I don't need my, my notes, I don't need anything. This is, an attitude, an overall attitude, okay? Because we have to be realistic. My recovery was terrible. Did it have to be? Probably not. Were there oversights made? Absolutely. But there is one, one attitude that I would recommend anyone out there, any guy out there thinking about getting the surgery uh, to adopt. And that attitude is to hope for the best because that's what we all do, but expect the worst expect the worst and mine wasn't even the worst so you know at the end of the day attitude is key okay and to maintain a positive attitude um, throughout is key and you know there's no easy way to to say that and there's really no easy way to do it either but I guess what I hope is that videos like this and, and you know videos like the the recovery vlog series help with portraying that attitude that that uh, you know we all hope for the best but certainly expect the worst and Look, at the end of the day, this goes back to what I said right at the start of this video, and that is that, you know, it doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter what happened, it doesn't matter how bad the recovery was, uh, it doesn't matter, you know, it, it, it doesn't even matter that it took, <laughs> it took almost three years for me to have, you know, a, a result that I was, you know, finally, I'd say 100% happy with. So three years, three years down the line, but there is one thing that remains and that is the fact that it was all worth it so 
Hope for the best guys, expect the worst, but just know, but just know that even if you do go through the worst, it's still going to be worth it. That was my video for today. Those were my five tips to prepare for a successful gyno surgery and recovery. I do have more gyno videos uh, in the pipeline, but if you do have any specific questions, please hit me up in the comment section below. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm coming to you from Christchurch, New Zealand. And peace out.